My name is Brady Gadel. I'm the Extension Soil Health Specialist at North Dakota State University. And I just want to give you a quick recap of what we've learned at the Share Farm up in Logan Center, North Dakota over the last five years of the project. So a little bit of the history of the Share Farm project. It started in 2019 as a way to provide demonstrative field scale and regional research uh, to the folks up in Logan Center, North Dakota. So it's an entire full field of 77 acres that we farm under a pinto bean, uh, corn, soybean, small grain rotation, which is very common to this area here. And we've overlaid that field with different soil health practices, primarily no-till and cover crops. So previous to 2019, that entire field was managed under conventional tillage practices. And we wanted to track through time how the field responded to that transition to no-till, the impact it has on, on crop yield, and along with can we consistently get a cover crop to grow using various different methods. So our first year we planted pinto beans out there and followed it up with a cover crop. We had a fairly successful cover crop that year but also struggled because of the late harvest timing and just the poor weather conditions for a cover crop. The unique thing though in that first year, a lot of farmers talk about a yield slump that happens when you transition to no-till. Our research didn't show that. Yields in the no-till plots and the conventionally tilled strip showed no yield difference. And that was true for the last four years of this project. Following those pinto beans with corn, with soybeans and with a small grain, none of them showed a significant yield difference. So for us and for farmers out there, even though there's not a yield difference from one tillage type to the other, you can already think of a cost savings by moving to a no-till. The less times you have to cross your field, even though that yield isn't higher, it's saving you money. Now that doesn't mean that we're not having challenges when we transition to this no-till. There's weed pressure difficulties that we have to deal with. The population of weeds shifts when we move to no-till, we no longer have that tillage to terminate perennial and biennial weeds. So as we move into this project, we're starting to learn about different approaches we have to take to weed management. Following up on one of the other things that we're studying on that field is cover cropping. And in general, what we've learned from cover cropping on the share farm is it depends on your year. Weather is the most important factor and also the most important factor we can't control. We had a lot of success interseeding our corn with the cover crop, but that's not always practical in every situation. The year that we thought we'd have the most success with the cover crop was following the small grain. However, that was uh, 2022, we had a very dry summer, um, and it just wasn't enough to germinate that cover crop and have enough biomass to make a lot of difference. So to recap what we've learned at the Share Farm over the last five years, is we're not seeing a difference in yield up in this Logan Center area um, for any crops as you transition from conventional till into no-till and also we're really considering some of the difficulties in planting cover crops and some of the considerations we have to take in when we think about planting a cover crop and what the benefits we want to get from it are. Mm -hmm.